um, make it clear, um, as Bob said, the whistleblowing is not a silver bullet. And uh, Transparency International has been campaigning worldwide and here in Ireland for, for quite some time for holistic, for, for comprehensive reform and measures aimed at preventing wrongdoing, uh, detecting it, uh, creating, fostering a, a culture that is intolerant of it. Um, the, the role of information and values, as Bob said, and the tone at the top, whether uh, in the public or private sector, is critical uh, for making government and business work in, in the public interest. And as we've heard from, from the Minister and the Ombudsman, strong institutions and strong legislations is, is, is also vitally important to serving the public interest. All our speakers, I think, have directly or indirectly uh, alluded to uh, the role that the individual plays, and particularly Bob talked about the need for us to take personal responsibility in confronting wrongdoing. People, to my mind, play the most important part in serving the public interest. Values are man or woman made. Information is processed and passed on by people. People run governments and operate banks. And people's lives are shaped by those who are responsible for defining values and delivering the services that make society function. And likewise, only people can hold their leaders to account. The problem is that people are often ill-equipped to make the right decisions. They have little support when facing an ethical dilemma and often little information on the consequences of speaking up. It's a key reason for, for setting up this service and another reason for establishing this service is the complexity and diversity of the cases people have come to us with already. Everyone from property developers to nurses, from bank employees to factory workers have contacted us over the past few years. No two people have asked for the same help or come to us for the same reasons. Some people are looking for legal advice. Others simply want to know whether they are doing the right thing. Some want to make a complaint that they can't or won't be handled or that can't or won't be handled by the authorities. Freedom of information issues are sometimes intertwined with, with a desire to, to report wrongdoing. Employees in the private sector sometimes face dilemmas that affect the public interest. It's not always clear whether corruption or incompetence is involved. What we do know is that some people need the help the state, a TD, a lawyer or even a journalist can't offer. Certainly the current law as it stands on whistleblower protection offers very little or scant protection at all. It's for these reasons that TI Ireland is launching Speak Up today. I've been receiving calls from the public uh, and whistleblowers for a long time, particularly after we launched a report such as the, the Corruption Perceptions Index or the Global Corruption Barometer. And in the past I used to say, sorry, we don't deal with individual cases. Um, it was a policy of TI for some time to, to build coalitions and not deal with the nitty gritty of, of an individual case because it required a great deal of, of work. But we found we had a responsibility to help people and if we couldn't help people ourselves, to find that help for them. Um, we've been planning this service for, for some time now and we didn't have the financial support we needed up until recently. Um, and given everything that we've learned over the past few years about fraud in our banks and public institutions, waste in, in government, it's a shame we weren't able to get it off the ground sooner. Um, as I said earlier on, maybe people just didn't see the need so pilot funding is now available for, for this service from the European Commission and it's, it's going to be reviewed by uh, two universities, Warwick University and uh, Constance University, a leading university in, in Germany, uh, to test the feasibility over the next year. So I'll just explain the background to, to, to this service. It's uh, the first of its kind, as we mentioned earlier on, in Western Europe. We should have two similar services in Finland and Luxembourg later this year. Uh, we, we beat them to it. We're operating around 46 such uh, centres. They're, they're known widely as advocacy and legal advice centres. For, for different reasons, we, we, we can't call it an advocacy and legal advice centre, not just yet. 
Um, and the purpose of, of the service really is, is to provide more than just legal advice. We're, we're aiming at helping people who are confronting an ethical dilemma. Um, they may not be reporting wrongdoing. They may be concerned about something they've seen at work. Um, they may, might be concerned about taking a gift from a supplier. They're not sure what to do, whether they, they, they might insult the supplier by declining the gift. Um, they might be concerned about the size of the gift they might be receiving. There are, there are a number of different scenarios in which uh, people will be confronted with, with ethical dilemmas. Um, there we go. Thanks very much. Um, and we're, 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 we're anxious to, to make it clear that this service is for both employees and workers in both the public and private sector and even in the non-profit sector. Um, fortunately, we've seen over the past uh, few years cases arise in, in a non-profit sector where we're not immune to, to wrongdoing uh, in, in, in the third sector either. Um, we will offer information as much as we can to people on the background to legislation that might uh, pertain to their individual case. We won't offer directly from our, from our office in, in, in Dublin off, uh, off Dame Street. We won't be offering legal advice, but we will do our best to s source legal advice for those people who come to us and who have a bona fide case to be dealt with. <laughs> Um, we will also use the, the statistics that we gather through our, our phone line to help diagnose those problems, to identify the risk areas both in the public and private sector so that reform can, can be properly informed uh, rather than informed by uh, desk research or academic research alone. Um, individuals will be, will be able to call the free phone uh, number, it's one 800 844-866 and when you get through you'll be asked a number of questions so that we were able to ascertain the nature of the case. We don't want too much information at that initial stage. The calls will be handled by volunteers whether they be um, law students or solicitors. They'll all be trained in handling the calls and the the, the details of the case without gathering too much information as I, as I mentioned earlier we don't want to know the identity of the individual or the identity and usually don't want to know the identity of the individuals concerned or who are subject of a complaint uh, will be used to uh, deal with that individual case we will then look at taking it further sourcing a, a uh, legal professional to help that person and or make an intervention ourselves. We, we may in some cases also report on behalf of those who are coming to us where both the complainant and the organisation they're, they're reporting to uh, agree. Um, we will also publish guides um, for, for citizens. We have a guide section here that will provide people with background information on, on legislation, for example, an alternative to silence report published last year uh, was the first guide or for, for, for legislators and policymakers on the, the, the comprehensive or lack of comprehensive uh, legislation uh, protecting whistleblowers in Ireland. We have policy positions for, 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 for uh, leaders in both the public and private sector and we, we also posted some resources there, the Whistleblowers Handbook, which is free and available for anyone who, is, who wants to get their message across, who, who is, is concerned with something they have confronted or witnessed at work uh, or in public life. Um, we'll also offer the opportunity to uh, people to, to contact us securely. We're using an encrypted email system that allows people to either contact us anonymously or contact us in, in, in confidence and will um, allow us and them to, to uh, correspond in a way that's far more secure than any traditional email system. Uh, you'll see here, um, help. Uh, we can, uh, we can also allow, we also allow people to, to upload files from their computer. Um, and that'll go straight through to us, to a secure server that's based in Canada. Um, we'll then be able to follow up on, on some of these cases where people have identified themselves. We'll also be encouraging people to uh, set up, if they're going to contact us anonymously or securely, a Hushmail account. It's like Hotmail, only the, the, 
the system is, is encrypted. Um, that's just a, a rough overview of the kind of services we're, we're looking to offer. We will be using, as I mentioned, the, the information that we do gather. The information will be anonymized to, 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 to um, campaign for, for reform. This is, a, this is not going to uh, fix any problems overnight, and I'm, I'm sure that it'll be a long time before we see the effects or the impact of our work on uh, institutions, our, our, legal, uh, our, our legal system and, and, and our, our society and culture more widely. Um, I'll finish there and I'd, I'd like to thank again our, our panellists, Minister Howland, uh, Ombudsman O'Reilly and Bob Semple. <coughs>